Welcome to the Retro Hack Shack. I'm Aaron Newcomb. Well, today is kind of a different and special episode, at least for me. I've been wanting to put this episode together for a while because every time I end up uh, bringing a piece of equipment to the, uh, the uh, vintage computer night that I run or showing it off to friends, they're always like, where did you get that? Where do you find these things? And so ever since I started the channel, I've been wanting to make a video about where to find vintage computers and technology, and today is that day, so I'm really looking forward to this. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to someone new, though. So this is Penelope. This is our new Golden Retriever pup. She's just about 10 weeks old, and she's also the reason why I haven't been able to put out as many episodes recently, or as frequently, at least as I would like. Uh, but she's very sweet, very cute, a little bitey, and she's still learning potty training. Um, but I think Penny will probably be a regular occurrence on the show. Oh, yes, you're very lovely. Um, and I uh, just thought I'd introduce you to her. So say hi to Penny. All right, you want to get down? No? Well, you got to get down so I can finish up the intro. Oh, yes, you're a good puppy. So today I'm going to share with you some of the places where I look for vintage computers, both online and in person, as well as some tips that I've learned over the past few years of looking for this stuff. Now, granted, this will be specific to my area of the, com of the country, which is the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area. So your mileage may vary here. If you're in another country or even another region of the United States, uh, these tips may or may not apply to you. So just keep that in mind as we go through here. All right, let's get started. Now, as I go through all the various places where I find my vintage computers and technology today, I'm going to be trying to let you know what price I paid as well. So it's not just here's where to go, but here's what I paid so that you know maybe at least what I'm seeing in my case and maybe what you would expect to see for similar types of things if you're looking for those online or in person. So I'm going to be talking a lot about prices. And with that in mind, I need uh, some help to let us know where we're going to be visiting today. Johnny? Can you help tell everyone where we're going to be going? Sure thing, Aaron. The first destination on our list is the thrift store. The thrift store, where you rarely find what you're looking for, but sometimes you get lucky. The next place we'll be visiting is online auctions. Online auctions bring you the convenience of shopping from home in the middle of a pandemic, but watch out for those shipping charges. Next, it's a trip to the neighborhood e-waste recycler. E-waste, save the environment and find a vintage computer at the same time. Finally, it's a walk down electronics memory lane when we visit an electronics surplus store. For all those really hard to find vintage electronics, nothing beats the surplus store. Back to you, Aaron. Thanks, Johnny. So let's start our journey by looking at thrift stores. Ten years ago, I used to see all kinds of technology items from the 80s. Keyboards, monitors, discs, games, even whole systems could be regularly found lying on the shelves. However, since then, things have dried up quite a bit. I'm lucky these days if I can find a cable I need or a relatively modern console game. There are some things you can do to increase the likeliness that you'll find something of interest, however. First, look for independent thrift stores that don't offer an online auction or shopping site. These places rely solely on their floor space to move their items and rotate their stock out more frequently. Second, find stores that are in more populated areas or in areas where people are moving in and out. For example, in my tiny town, there aren't very many items getting donated. But if you consistently see a drop-off line forming, that's a good sign. Some stores even have dedicated lanes for cars to pull up in. Stores that are located near military bases where people are moving around a lot can be more productive when you're looking for something, as opposed to towns like mine where the population is less transient. So here are a few items that I found recently at brick and mortar thrift stores. Okay, I'm heading out into the garage now because I know there's some thrift store finds out here. Uh, should be some good examples. One thing you can find at thrift stores, uh, and sorry, this is a this is a stack of stuff that I have to go through that I've just been piling up for the past couple months. Um, but this is uh, this is something you can find in the organization file at most thrift stores is these disc 
uh, holders for both uh, five and a quarter and three and a half inch discs. So be on the lookout for these if you're making your own discs. This one happens to be two ninety nine at uh, Goodwill. Uh, what else do we have in here? This is definitely a thrift store find here. This is an iMation Super Disc disc drive, eight bucks at uh, it says eight bucks at Home Goods. I don't think I paid eight bucks for it though. That was uh, uh, I think when I brought it up to the counter, that was the wrong sticker. That was from another store. So I think this was probably more like three or four bucks. Um, so that's pretty cool. So here's a few bags that I know came from the thrift store. Let's take a look and see what's in those. Uh, so this was kind of interesting. I hadn't seen one of these before. I remember hearing about it. Action Max. Uh, of course, no power supply. It's not in great shape. But uh, it was uh, $7.99. So that was kind of expensive for me, but... Um, that's okay. It actually uh, should be should make an interesting video. The other thing you can find, I find a lot of these, is joysticks. This was three dollars, and uh, I've got a whole collection of joysticks. In fact, let me show you. So there's a bunch of joysticks up here. Most of these I got from thrift stores. A few of them I bought online. Sorry, I have to go way up here to show you. There's a couple of sidewinders in there. Uh, these are mostly PC joysticks joysticks for pc but there's also some that i gotten from commodore and some other things uh all of my other major systems that i have you can see um the apples i got these uh, apples from e-waste not from thrift stores but the apple computers um you know atari tandy uh, a lot of the game systems almost all of those came from other sources besides thrift stores it's just the little things that i tend to find these days Speaking of little things, I did find this complete system. It's a Timex Sinclair 1000 with the memory expansion. And I did find that in a thrift store. So you, it's not that you can't find systems, but I think in this case, nobody knew what this was really. So I got that for four bucks. Not bad. My rating on traditional thrift stores is one star out of five. It takes a lot of time and luck to be able to find anything really interesting there these days. Even if you're looking at some good stores, you might find that items are still going straight to a thrift store auction site instead of landing on the shelves. I check out shopgoodwill.com quite a bit and I see a lot of electronics and games ending up there that I never see in the store. Let's just take a quick look and see what's on the site today. So if you've never been to shopgoodwill.com, this is what the homepage looks like. Um, you can see right away some so suggested items here. I don't know if they're tailoring these for me, but you can see that there's some Nintendo, there's an N64 with some um, cartridges here and you know it's a whole system and uh, it's already up to $51 with six days left. Um, that's not bad, but I used to see these things go for about 30, 40, maybe $50 total. And you know, this is going to go up probably from here to the 70, 80, hundred dollar range. Still not bad, I guess, for a complete system. It's up to you what it's worth, but just to note that these type of games with cartridges, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, um, have all kind of gone up over time. Um, so what I typically do is I go right to the categories and select computers and electronics because I'm not interested in anything else. Um, and then I kind of scroll down and see what is uh, up for bid, if you will. Okay, so one thing you can definitely find right now on Shop Goodwill is original PlayStations. Here's a PlayStation with accessories um, that's currently going for $36. Now this has a lot of accessories, four controllers. Um, so that's this is a little exceptional, but I typically see PlayStation 1s with two controllers uh, going for less than $20. So if you're into PlayStation, now's a great time to buy. I don't know why those are, you know, going down in price, uh, or it seems to be. But yeah, you can find PlayStations really reasonably right now uh, if you're in the market for a PlayStation. Here's three Super Nintendo games. Um, and you can see kind of what I'm talking about right now. They're going for $41. Now, these three are particularly good games, but $41? And they'll probably go for more than that. Uh, there's a couple hours left on this auction. So these Nintendo cartridges, for whatever reason, on Shop Goodwill are, are uh, going for a lot of money right now. So let's do some custom searching uh, now for things that you might want to look at. Let's just take a look and see if there's anything listed here for Commodore. Um, yep, and sure enough, I've, I saw this one a couple days ago, actually, and it's gone way up. Uh, so this is, looks like two 
Commodore 1541 drive. No, three. There's two 1541s and I think a uh, 15, looks like a 1571 maybe? And a modem, you know, and a few other things, right? I mean, they've got all the power supplies, pretty much everything you need. So uh, there there are older items to be had uh, if you... Uh, if you're in the market. Here's a dot matrix printer that I looked at before. Uh, here's a VIC-20. Okay, so $45. Um, yeah, it's got uh, three days left, so it'll probably go up from there. Looks like it's in good shape. It's got the older style badge, not the the rainbow badge on it. If I recall, that was a, that was a thing, or maybe I'm thinking of the C64. Anyway, um, yeah, this looks like a pretty good price, but it'll probably go up. I'm not sure why they have that chip separately. That's kind of weird. Just take a look at Atari. That's another general search I do from time to time. You'll often find big sets of uh, cartridges, for example. Now this only has four hours to go, um, but look at all the different cartridges and uh, controllers that this is going for. $51 right now. Um, yeah, it'll probably go for somewhere between $50 and $100, I would think. But the fact that this has all the manuals, all the controllers, you know, that's, that's worth something. A lot of times you'll just find a few of the common cartridges um, going for, you know, $10, $20. Yep, sure enough, here's one. It's got a lot of the the basic uh, cartridges here. Um, I remember playing MASH. It wasn't a very good game, but I liked it because I liked the show. Uh, anyway, a lot of the basic cartridges here with the manuals, so that's something. Um, and it's currently going for $14. So if you're in the um, market for Atari cartridges, you know, this might be something you want to go for. Or if you're just starting out a collection, you're just getting back into Atari, you, know, you can get some of the basic cartridges here for not that much. And this auction has six hours left. So yeah, this will probably go for around 20 bucks, I would guess. Now, one thing you do have to be careful of if you're on any auction site, whether it's eBay, Shop Goodwill, uh, whatever, is the shipping charges. And they can be quite high. So here's a few cartridges I ordered because I needed some, uh, ironically, this was listed as Atari cartridges bundle of four. Um, but it's actually, if we look at the picture here, it's uh, an Atari cartridge and three uh, TI-99 slash four cartridges. So um, I needed the TI-99 cartridges. I already got this 5200 Vanguard cartridge, but anyway, I just happened to find that. I won the auction, but let's take a look at the shipping cost here. So uh, shipping is, um, you know, I paid $18 for this, which I thought was fair, but shipping was, you know, 869, handling is 250. I went ahead and rounded up my donation to support charity. Um, and in the end, I, pay, I ended up paying $31 for these four cartridges. So then now we're talking borderline, was it worth it? I don't know. There's the convenience factor of having it shipped to my house, which is great. I don't have to worry about going to the thrift store or maybe a flea market to try to find this stuff. So there's a convenience factor there, but still $31 for four cartridges. Eh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I think that's a little steep, but for me, eh, it's worth it. And just one more here. Another thing I typically look for, although I don't get a lot of hits is, uh, TRS-80 stuff. So whether it's TRS-80 or TRS-80 color computer, they'll usually be listed that way. And this is a computer modem for TRS-80, for the original TRS-80, not the color computer. And um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I don't think I've seen one of these in real life before. So it looks like this is already getting bid up a little bit. It's still got uh, four hours to go. So hmm. Maybe should I bid on it and get this to show on the channel? I've got a TRS-80 that I need to do something with. Uh, hmm, maybe I'll bid on it. Well, I bid on it and right away I was outbid. So somebody really wants this thing. I'm not willing to pay more than $30 for it or so. So uh, yep, somebody else will get it. It's a good find. Perhaps it's because of the pandemic or maybe more people are aware of shopgoodwill.com than they used to be. But in general, the prices have been going up, especially on Nintendo game cartridges and handhelds. Still, you can sometimes find good deals. One tip is to filter your search by browsing to just your local franchise. Often, when not in a pandemic, you can pick up your items locally, eliminating the shipping charges and saving a lot of money. So I give shopgoodwill.com two stars out of five. You're more likely to find things that you're looking for there, but the shipping and handling costs add a lot to the price. Of course, I need to mention eBay briefly here as well, but I figure most people are already familiar with that one. I buy stuff on eBay all the time. 
but I often limit my search to local auctions only, especially on those items that are pretty heavy. And then if the option isn't listed, I always ask the seller if they will do a local pickup anyway. More often than not, they're fine with that, even during the pandemic. There are safe ways to exchange equipment. Just make sure that you're in a public outdoor place for safety and also follow the COVID guidelines. If you're new to collecting, be sure to check out the selling history of similar items. There are tons of people on eBay that mark stuff up way too high, hoping that someone will buy it without doing their research. So it seems like more often than not, the things that I typically buy on eBay fall into the you know, vintage uh, IC category. So uh, you can see some of the chips that I've bought recently. Um, but there's other things that I've bought here as well. So you may have seen my recent video where I featured this Packard Bell laptop that I fixed up and got working through a little battery hack that I did. Um, and here's, I got that on eBay and it was uh, $50 looked like it was in really good condition and it was only nine dollar shipping so in this case even though it was local you know because of the pandemic i went ahead and paid for shipping uh it also saved me a lot of time to have them ship it to me so you know i feel like this was a pretty good deal and uh you know you've seen the results yourself if you've watched that video i give ebay three stars out of five if you really need something it's likely that you can find it there easier than some of the other options just be careful of that shipping cost and price gouging. There are other options for online shopping when it comes to vintage electronics and computers. Two other sites that I use are Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Facebook Marketplace tends to be overpriced as people find something that they think is way more valuable than it actually is. However, if you're paying attention, you can sometimes find things that people just want to get rid of as fast as possible, but you need to jump on those quickly. I was lucky enough, thanks to a tip from a friend, to find this Atari 400 system with some software for just 50 bucks. When I picked it up, the seller told me that there was a long waiting list of about 20 people that had asked about it after I had contacted her. Where I live, people are still using Craigslist to sell items. I don't think it's as popular in other regions, but from time to time, I've found some interesting deals there. For example, I found this compact portable that I'll be featuring on the channel at some point for $80, which I thought was a very fair price. There are other sites and apps which fall into this category. Mercari is one. In fact, I featured some speakers I bought on Mercari on an episode just recently. Another one is OfferUp, which allows you to pick up stuff locally. Those are just two of the ones that come to mind. In general, these types of sites get three stars out of five for me. You can find stuff regularly, but you just have to be careful that you don't get ripped off. Again, if local pickup is an option, that will help you minimize your cost. It's rare to find something really special, but if you're diligent, it will pay off. Estate sales are few and far between for me. Perhaps you've had better luck. I struggle to find the ones that have vintage computers listed for sale anywhere. It seems like to be that they're all about porcelain, statues, paintings, silverware, those kinds of items. However, I did visit an estate sale recently of someone who had been a collector and still had many items stored away in the garage. In fact, this is where I found that infamous 5154 monitor that I featured on one of my most popular videos. There were keyboards and mice all over the place, tons and tons of old computers from 46s to Pentiums. There were also lots and lots of ISA and extended ISA boards, some PCI stuff too, and even a whole stack of Macs. It, just due to the infrequency of finding an estate sale that has anything I'm interested in, I have to give them one star out of five. For me, it takes a lot of time to track down the sales that might have anything of interest, and then when you do find them, uh, sometimes it's hit or miss or the person isn't pricing them accurately. Finally, we have e-waste or recycling facilities. This is where I find most of the items I feature on my channel or add to my collection. It can be a challenge at first because not all e-waste sites want to bother with selling to the general public. However, I found that by building relationships with the people that work there, they'll usually at least let you browse around from time to time and pick something up. Sometimes they'll even give you a heads up when something you're looking for turns up on their doorstep. Sometimes they also post things on eBay or other sites, so if you set up a saved search, you can keep an eye on what they're getting in day by day and perhaps they'll cut you a deal. 
Uh, sometimes they even allow you to make an offer on eBay or other sites. Um, and typically, if they know who you are, they're more likely to accept that offer. Here are just a few of the things I found at e-waste facilities. I had found these two things online. One is a TRS-80 Color Computer 1, Model 1, um, and an iMac G3. So I came down here to pick these up. While I was here, I found some other stuff. Let me show you. There's a Toshiba uh, Portage, I guess is how I never really understood how to say that. Um, I think that's a 13, uh, 3600 there. I found these old, old keyboards, which are really cool. Um, I don't think they have high-end switches in them or anything like that, but they're just really cool. You know, 86 key or 83 key um, keyboards. One was in the box. Uh, some Byte magazines, which he, uh, the guy that worked here threw in, uh, just because he's a nice guy. I also, I also got a Toshiba satellite, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, thing is, just weighs a ton. Um, I got a AT power supply. Uh, because I'm looking to make a 486 at some point, and I thought it would be good just to have one of these. Don't know if it works, but that's okay. You can see it's a little bent up there. Um, got a PSP in a little case for a buddy of mine. Uh, some IDE and FDD cables, floppy drive cables. Um, one cool thing, again, basically threw this in for free. It, I found, not a lot of people would be interested in this, but I am. It's uh, uh, some old uh, driver disks. So there's... Um, floppy driver disks, SGA, um, uh, or sorry, VGA card uh, disks, and um, this is pretty cool. It's a mouse driver and menu maker <laughs> in one disk. I remember these utility disks coming with, you know, if you bought a mouse, they would come with it. Um, so those floppies will be great. I will be sure to get the software off this to preserve it in case it's not available. And then um, a couple of mice and a Super Nintendo controller. And then down at the bottom, um, as you're probably seeing underneath here, is a 5150. Now this 5150, they've taken, they've cut off the power, which is really unfortunate. You can fix that with some, um, you know, by getting the Molex connectors and everything and putting it back together, if this is working. And then um, the 5150 itself with the motherboard, I'm not gonna dig it all out, but there's the, the motherboard and basically that's it, and the case. Um, so I've got the case somewhere, I think. Actually, I might have to go back in for the case. Um, yeah, but that's a, if you find a good place, you can get a haul like that. Um, and uh, for, for relatively, I'm not gonna say exactly how much I paid, but these were all really good deals. Something I wouldn't be able to find even at a thrift store. Um, so really glad to get this for me and my buddies. In fact, I got this monitor I restored on one of my videos from an e-waste facility. So e-waste facilities for me are the new place to go. If you have one in your area, I highly recommend it. I give e-waste facilities four stars out of five. Uh, if you can find one and develop some relationships, they're a great place to pick up vintage computers. It's not just the systems themselves that are hard to find. The components you need to fix these systems can also be hard to find. eBay and AliExpress can certainly help, but sometimes you pay more for shipping than the actual cost of the item itself. Silicon Valley used to have at least a half a dozen good surplus electronic stores. These are stores that would buy up new old stock from tech companies that were going out of business and then sell it to the general public as surplus. Excess Solutions is one of the last surplus stores in the Bay Area, but you can find some really good stuff there. This place is literally a warehouse full of electronics goodies. There are rows and rows of resistors, capacitors, logic chips, sockets, and much, much more. You're pretty much on your own here, so it can take a few hours sometimes to find a list of items, let's say, but it's worth it. The way this works is you take a plastic bin and a pencil and paper and start looking. Everything is neatly organized into separate areas. When you find what you're looking for, you write down the item, quantity, and the price for each item. Then when you're finished, you bring your bin up to the cash register and they total it up for you. If you ever happen to be in the Bay Area near San Jose, I highly suggest you take a look, but don't forget to bring a list of the items you're looking for with you. There's one more thing I wanted to mention in terms of being able to find things easier. It's not necessarily a where, but a what or a who, perhaps, in this case, and that is a community. 
Now, uh, over the past few years, I found several people that uh, uh, share my passion for collecting and repairing old electronics and computers, um, and we help each other out. So if somebody sees something on Craigslist or eBay or in person somewhere, they'll take a picture or a, uh, post a link to uh, other people either through text or through online meeting boards like Discord or Slack. Uh, and they're able to spread the word like, hey, there's this thing. Or perhaps uh, in the case where you have too much stuff and you want to get rid of stuff, they'll say, hey, I'm getting rid of this uh, you know, Macintosh SE30. Is anybody interested? Or I've got way too many you know, 486 PCs. Is anybody in the market for one? And we also post things that we're looking for so that when I'm out and about, looking, especially during the pandemic, we're not in a big group or anything together physically, uh, I can be looking on behalf of others for those items as well. So I'd highly recommend joining a group or forming a group and you'll find that you'll be, uh, find all kinds of things that you weren't just physically capable of finding before because you can't be everywhere at once. Highly recommend either joining or forming a vintage computer club or group. So I hope you found that interesting, useful. Um, please share in the comments below maybe what your best deal was. What was the, your favorite thing that you found? The most unexpected thing that you found while you were out and about shopping either at a thrift store or online. I'd love to see your stories and read about the things that you've been able to find or maybe some places that I didn't cover today that you want to make sure people are aware of. So there's tons of places to look and I really am looking forward to reading your comments on, on the video. So post those down below. Now, I told you there was a couple of announcements I had and that's where we're at right now. So the first announcement is that uh, this week as I was editing the video, I actually reached 1000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. It's only been seven months since I started doing this to kind of uh, give me something to do during the pandemic and share my passion for this stuff. And you guys have really responded and you just kept subscribing and subscribing. Every time I looked at the numbers, it blew my mind away. And so I hit a thousand subscribers, which is definitely a milestone for me and for YouTube because for a couple of reasons. One is that I can start monetizing the channel to put more money back into doing these. I need a new camera. Uh, I'd love to be able to buy some really special but kind of expensive vintage computers that I might be able to showcase on the channel. And that'll help me do that. But that's not really the reason I'm doing it, as you know. Uh, actually, the other reason that I'm excited about this is because YouTube actually starts promoting your channel more when you hit that thousand mark and you start being monetized, then it spreads the word and I want to grow the community. So I'm really excited to, to hit that mark and it really does show me that you all appreciate the content. I want to say there's been nothing but kind words in the comments and online, either through Instagram or Twitter. Everybody has been so, so encouraging and uh, just just plain nice. I haven't had any trolls or anything like that. Um, I'm sure they'll come as I get more popular. You know, I'm not as popular as LGR or the 8-Bit guy, but I just wanted to thank everyone for keeping this community nice, encouraging, and friendly. Uh, if it's been one of the best surprises about getting into this hobby is the amount of encouragement and help and uh, knowledge sharing that, that happens. If you read through the comments, you'll see a lot of that. So keep that up. Really appreciate everyone subscribing. And to celebrate, at least for now, uh, I've generated some new merchandise that you can buy if you are a fan of the show. I've got this uh, Retro Hack Shack t-shirt and other t-shirts that I've made that are vintage technology uh, related. So you can go to RetroHackShack.com and click on the store. And I've kind of uh, taken all those and uh, put them on one site so that they're easy to find. Don't have to. It's not going <laughs> to bother me if you don't. But if you are interested, they're there. And I've got this new t-shirt uh, for the channel. So if you're a fan of the show, go grab a t-shirt and wear it with pride. Um, that's one thing. And then the other thing is a new episode coming to celebrate the 1000 subscriber mark that I hit this week. I've been talking about it on past shows. That's coming up. I'm working on it now. And I think it's going to be really exciting. My challenge is how to cover everything I want to cover in that video in about 30 minutes. It's going to be really challenging because there's just so much. I don't want to give it away just yet, but that video to celebrate is coming. I look forward to that. And now I have a real reason to get back and finish it uh, that I hit this thousand subscriber mark. So I'm going to do that and be looking forward to that on the channel. So with that, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.
If you want to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash RetroHackShack and sign up. If you support me at a high enough level, you can get your picture in the credits, just like Parker here. End of line.